Hello there, another quick thought, a very simple thought today, uh, but actually uh, one, uh, if you're in Greater Grace Ministries and you've uh, heard uh, myself preach, Pastor Shala, many uh, of the uh, leadership of uh, Greater Grace, you would be very familiar with this doctrine, this teaching, but if you're not, then maybe uh, it's something that many people get uh, slightly skewed in their head. A very simple verse today but again this idea that we're gonna uh, bust some of the myths that are, are around Christianity that actually get people in the in the wrong uh, mindset um, Genesis 2 very basic it says uh, in verse 15 and the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it and the Lord God commanded the man saying of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it for in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die and you know what most of human existence most of uh, religion most of uh, other things that go on, philosophy, uh, morality, is based on this idea that there is good and there is evil. And we exist on this sliding scale between the two. And some people are good and some people are evil and some people are, are sort of maybe a little bit in between. But there is this genuine goodness out there. And you know what? Many Christians get sidetracked. Uh, I know I remember years ago getting sidetracked by the idea that but what happens if somebody who's a Christian does something wrong? But somebody who's not a Christian and has no regard for God, somebody who's an atheist or somebody who belongs to a, um, another religion, they do something that is very good. Then how can it be that, you know, does this shake my faith? That someone who is a Christian is not as good as somebody who is not a Christian? And the answer to that is very simply no. Because you know what? We go back to this, tr this tree. The tree was of the knowledge of good and evil. And this sliding scale that people have uh, of morality between good and evil is man's construct. Because man ate of the tree in rebellion God told them not to eat of it because in the day that you eat of it you'll surely die but also in the day that you eat of it you will have the knowledge of good and evil and you will have the moral capacity to decide well I think I'm being very good today but I think that person is not as good and I think that person is 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 very bad but I don't think that other person is not quite as bad as the other bad person because I am the moral judge and I am the moral center of everything that I do and everything revolves around me and if I decide one day that this thing that I've done is not that bad so I can do it but I should decide tomorrow that because somebody else is doing it then it's very bad and they shouldn't do it then we become very hypocritical and we live in this nightmarish idea of a sliding scale of morality of good and evil and the knowledge of good and evil and the knowledge of good and evil depresses us the knowledge of good and evil discourages us and the knowledge of good and evil will actually take us to the grave because that's what God says but actually you know what there's another tree it's the tree of life and when the Lord Jesus Christ came to the earth he came to lay down his life now Adam and Eve were not barred from eating of the tree of life initially they could have eaten from that tree instead of eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil in rebellion against God it was, an, it was a choice to them but today that tree is not uh, there available to us it will be again one day it will be again in the, in the end of the book of Revelation uh, the tree is there for the healing of the nations um, and it bears 12 fruits uh, but you know what um, for us today we have the tree of Calvary we have the tree of life there's a different tree out there there's a there's a different tree uh, uh, involved we don't live in this relative righteousness relative morality of all oh, that person's a bit better that today I'm a bit better than I was yesterday and tomorrow I'm not as good as I am today you know it's like well this is a nightmare 
of evaluation and measurement and and also it colors the way that we look at society the reason that many people many christians are afraid uh, of uh, um, of, well, I can't judge that other person because of this. It's because they live in this relative righteousness. Whereas the issue is very simple. It's the cross. It's the Lord Jesus Christ and it's the tree of life. And the issue is not about whether we're good or bad. The issue is about saved or lost. The issue is about uh, um, forgiven. It's about being redeemed. It's about newness of life. It's about whether we actually trust God's judgment on these things and his morality, his spirit, whether we're filled by it with him or whether we still choose to live in this old idea of, well, oh, you know, the superstitious idea, good people go to heaven, bad people go to hell. No, that's not what the Bible ever teaches and that is not the gospel. The gospel is that saved people, people that are bought with the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, people that know him as saviour, that trust God, that are filled with his spirit, people that are, are born again, people that are renewed, they are the ones that go to heaven regardless of what they've done in this life, however wicked they may have been. But those, however good they may seem, however uh, self-righteous they may be, um, those that have rejected the payment that God made for them, Sadly, they are the ones that end up in hell. You know, this very simple clarity of uh, good and evil and the knowledge of good and evil and what it means for us today, it will actually sort us straight on so many issues that we don't get tried, sidetracked on looking at other people, comparing other people. We don't get sidetracked on evaluating our own life and worrying about whether we've been good enough or, or bad enough or... Uh, no, we trust wholeheartedly in what the Lord Jesus Christ has done for us on the cross. And we also trust wholeheartedly in what the Lord Jesus Christ has done for other people on the cross. Take care, God bless, and see you again soon.